Hello minions, Wheezy here, and today I'm going to talk to you about some more nerdy technology stuff. Um, I'm, this time I'm going to be talking to you about HDCP on the Xbox One X. Um, I've already done a video on the PS4 Pro. This is going to be the analog to that for the Xbox One X. Um, so I'm going to walk you through uh, briefly what HDCP is. I'm also going to explain to you how you can bypass it. The main reason being to use it on old displays and... Uh, and non-compliant devices. Um, and so I'm gonna walk you through that, show you exactly what you need. I'll have links to everything that you need if you wanna be able to set this up yourself. Um, and uh, let's get it figured out and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so the first thing that I want to briefly cover is what is HDCP? Uh, in the PS4 Pro video, this is a little bit of a repeat if you've already seen that, but HDCP stands for High Bandwidth, High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. And fundamentally what that means is that some group of people somewhere got together and decided that they would make some laws to try and control what you're allowed to do with content after you buy it. Um, some people may argue with my definition, but that's my perspective, so there it is. Um, what I wanna show you how to do is how you can bypass that. The main reason you would wanna do that is if you have a non-HDCP 2.2 or earlier compliant display. So let's say you're an early adopter on a 4K TV or a 4K display. You've got an old TV sitting around with an HDMI port that is pre-HDMI 1.4 even. Um, and you plug your Xbox One X into it and it just doesn't work. That's a bad thing. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that. Um, more advanced applications, the main reason that I have to work with it is I have a display out in the den as well as my display here in the office. And I like to be able to use a splitter so that I can display one console on both TVs um, for, and uh, not have to unplug it and go plug it in. I like my life to be easy. <laughs> and I like to not have to switch through things. Another thing that complicates it for me, I'm not gonna address in this video, I'll do a different video, is that I use a Switch so that I can have my P, not the Nintendo Switch, although we do have a Nintendo Switch. Um, what I mean is my PS4 Pro and my Xbox One X are hooked into an HDMI Switch because um, I don't wanna be messing around with a bunch of nonsense so I can just really easily, with the press of a button, switch between my PlayStation and my Xbox and it displays to both my monitor in here so that I can capture for my YouTube channel as well as to my TV out there in case I wanna go sit out on the couch and play a game on the big screen. Um, I'm gonna walk you through how to do all of that. Uh, I guess I'm kinda of carrying on so I'll, uh, I'll switch the camera around and I'm gonna show you what we're working with here. Okay, so the first thing I want to address is how does HDCP work on the Xbox One X? Um, I have got my capture displayed up in OBS. I use an AverMedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, which has 4K pass-through. This does not capture in 4K. It captures in 1080p, but it does allow a full 4K pass-through. So I will show you on the monitor here that we are at 2160, 60 hertz, so we are at 4K 60 on our display, enjoying the full beauty of why the hell would you have an Xbox One X if you can't play in 4K? Um, so by default, uh, the Xbox is a little bit nicer than the PS4 Pro on this. By default, the HDCP on the Xbox is off. And that's good because fundamentally, if you're playing games, you wanna stream and capture, they know that that's a good deal for them. It helps them. So that is off by default. Um, and if you'll look at the setup right now, I am simply plugged the Xbox Series uh, One X, not Series X. Series X comes tomorrow. The Xbox One X into the input, and this output goes to my AverMedia uh, capture, and then there's an output pass through from that that goes into my monitor. You can see there are no issues right now. So what happens is if you turn on something that does have co protected content, and Netflix is just an easy example, you will see that when it activates Netflix, what it's going to do is the Xbox is going to say, "Wait, this is protected content." It's going to click through, do an HTCP handshake, as you can see right there. And then the capture device is gonna say, hey, this is an HTCP signal. I'm not allowed to capture or display that. So, um, so I'm going to stop. And this is what you got. The display still can display it because it did the HTCP handshake. It understands. The capture device also understands, but the law has told the manufacturer of this device that you must program it so that it will not allow you to do this. So that is what they have done. Now the problem, with the Xbox, and this is something that a lot of people don't know, is if you go out here, and even if you go here and you say quit the application, now it is not in Netflix, 
HDCP is still active. And let's complicate it even further. And let's turn off the console. Boo -doo -doo -doo. So it's shutting down. It's still flashing. Still flashing. Okay. So it is. Uh, it has turned itself off. Now you will see places online where they talk about the instant on versus eco mode for the Xbox as a way to get past this. Um, I will show you why that's not really applicable here. And so I'm turning the Xbox back on. Bloop, 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 bloop. And you'll see it has jumped right back into the Xbox. My display is coming back up. But HDCP is still active even though Netflix is not active. Now, this will remain active until the Xbox shuts itself all the way off. And if you have in the settings, we will go to general power mode and startup. If you have instant on, on, which is good to have because the Xbox comes on super fast, uh, it will never turn itself all the way off, which means it will never deactivate HDCP. So the things online will tell you, we'll switch your power mode to energy saving. But what that does is it just makes it so when you turn the Xbox off, the instant on doesn't work. And eventually the Xbox will turn itself all the way off and then HDCP will deactivate. Leave instant on on because you want this. This is nice. There is a button in here called full shutdown. If you activate HDCP, you have to come into general power mode and startup and you have to do a full shutdown of the console manually in order for it to power all the way down and disable the HDCP content protection. So we will, and this takes a minute because it's doing a full shutdown. It's saving things into memory and turning off network connections and doing all the smart stuff. And you'll see that it goes through a different startup. And if you've had an Xbox One or an Xbox One X for a while, you are also gonna see something that surprised me when I did this the first time. Come on, this, take, this does take a minute to turn all the way off. And we are gonna explain all this goodness when we go through uh, how to make this work. Okay, so it's finally shut all the way off. This bad boy says, okay, we're, we're off. No bueno, turn off, monitor's dying. So we're gonna turn the Xbox back on. And if you haven't done this on your Xbox in a while, you may forget that it actually does this because it surprised me. I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna get a beat. Waking up, come on. I think the Bluetooth has to listen. It plays the Xbox startup. Like you see that when you turn the console on the first time. And if you leave it on instant on, you like never see that again. <laughs> I was, I forgot that it even did that until I figured this out. Um, so if you do a full shutdown, it does a full boot back up. This also takes a while. So yes, leave instant on on so you don't have to deal with this crap. Um, but if you don't have what I'm gonna show you and you wanna turn HDCP back off, that's what you gotta do, okay? So when this boots back up, uh, I am going to, actually, I can go ahead and continue booting up because HDCP's off, as you can tell. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I get this all hooked up uh, to get the it working with a non-HDCP compliant device. So I'm gonna switch that over real quick and then I'll walk you through it. Okay, so we are back, our Xbox one X is hooked up to our capture device, our display, everything's still good. I have all this hooked up, I will explain it to you, but it is important to note that I haven't done anything with the Xbox, so as of right now, HDCP is still off on these devices, or on the Xbox One X. So if we come over here, what we have is an HDCP 2.2 compatible splitter, uh, an HDCP 2.2 to 1.4 converter, hands getting a little shaky, and an old school uh, dumb HDMI splitter. So, um, Wow, my hand's getting rushy, I switch hands. Um, so I'll have links, you can get all of this stuff on Amazon for relatively cheap, so I'll have links to explain how it all works, um, or to, to show where you can get it. Um, but now I'm gonna kinda explain how this works here. So this eight, um, this uh, 1.4, 2.2 to 1.4 converter, uh, what it does, obviously, is what it says, it changes a 2.2 signal to a 1.4 signal. Um, the problem that I've encountered uh, is that if you hook the Xbox straight into this and then straight into the display, uh, it does not seem to work. Dogs, chill out. <laughs> it does not work and I think the reason for that is because the display does an HDCP 2.2 handshake and this is getting an HDCP 1.4 signal and so it just doesn't play nice. So this setup is what I have found is necessary. 
Now, this dumb splitter um, goes back to the old days of the Xbox 360 and PS3 um, before the console manufacturers realized that it was important for people to be able to capture and stream. It helps their business. Um, and so this is an HDCP 1.4 compatible splitter and it removes the HDCP 1.4 signal uh, or encryption. So this is not compatible with HDCP 2.2. So if you plug your Xbox or uh, directly into here and go out, then you will get a black display on there because it does not know how to transmit or handshake with HDCP 2.2. So what we've got here is the 2.2 compatible splitter the input is the Xbox One, or yeah, the Xbox One X to the input, and the output. I'll show you the the labels here. So we've got the HDMI in and the HDMI out. The output from the splitter is going to the HDCP 2.2 to 1.4 converter. So here you'll see on the input side we've got 2.2 in, and we have got let's see, get some light in there, 1.4 out. So the output is a 1.4 HDCP signal, and that is being fed into this old dumb splitter, and that is in the HDMI input there. And then the output goes to our capture device, and then the output of that to the display. So what you've got here is a 2.2 signal being hand shook here so that the encryption can talk nice with the display. That's passed into a converter that changes that HDCP 2.2 to a 1.4, and then this pulls out the HDCP 1.4 encryption. So what you get out here is a clean HD signal. Now, if we'll go over here and look, you will see that it is still on my monitor, a 2160 60 hertz. So we're still at 4K 60, but HDCP is not active. So if I go over here, and again, Netflix is just a good example, and launch it, you'll see what we saw before, it'll go to a flicker where it's going to do an HDCP handshake. Come on, turn it on. Uh, actually, I guess it's already did the handshake, but you'll see now that it didn't get locked out as it did before. Um, so I must have hand done the handshake when it powered on. Sometimes you'll get that flicker when HDCP activates. But as you can see now, clearly HDCP is active. So now I don't have to worry about I can go into a game and still do that. I don't have to worry about doing that ridiculous hard power of my series, not my Series X, my Xbox One X. Series X is tomorrow. Um, I don't have to do the hard power of my Xbox One X and this just works. So I can put this to my non uh, HCCP compliant displays and all of that good stuff. Uh, an interesting note, like I said, I'll cover in a different video with using the Switch as well as the splitter is my other display that's out, or my t main TV that's out in the den. Um, when I hook it into here, you don't want to hook the second display to this splitter because it will, in addition to already being the HDCP 2.2 signal, it can get confused where the two different displays will try to argue with what to do. Now, if you have two mostly identical displays with the same capabilities, a 444 HDR compatible display on both sides, it's not really a big deal. This monitor, does not support HDR or 444 uh, for 4K. Um, it only supports 420. So if I plug both of them into here, then they will argue over who gets the display. My TV usually wins and it switches it to a 4K HDR 444 signal, and then my monitor can't display it. However, when I hook it out here and I have them set to compatible signals, then this will work on both TVs. So I have this set. Um, it doesn't apply to the Xbox that I can tell. There is a button in there where you can say allow Y, you know, 420. Um, I don't have that on. Um, the PS4 Pro, I have more of an issue with it. Um, I had to go in and set the PS4 Pro to YUV 420. But when I do that in the PS4 Pro and say you will be YUV 420 when you're on a 4K display, then it displays there and it gets split and it displays on my other display just fine. So. Um, this is the setup. Uh, like I said, I'll have links. I'm also going to link to wheeziesgaming.com where I'll have a write-up of this in case a write-up is easier for you to follow than re-watching a video over and over. Um, but yeah, that is the setup for how you can get your Xbox One X working at 4K 60 Hertz with a non-HDCP compatible display.
So I hope you guys found that helpful or informative. Um, I, you know, that this can be an issue for people with old hardware. And although three devices at about 40 bucks a pop, I think the old school splitters are usually less than 20, but you're talking about a half, about a hundred bucks for this setup to be able to do this. But that may be cheaper for you than buying a new monitor or a new TV. So this can be a really good way to be able to use what you bought on what you own without someone somewhere being all paranoid about what you're allowed to do with your own content. So sometimes you gotta get a little nerdy to get around some stupidity. That is what we're doing here. There is some anti-consumer shit in the HDCP nonsense, and this allows you to have your life a little bit easier and not have to buy a whole bunch of new equipment. Um, so if you guys got some good information from this and you felt it was useful, give it a like. So uh, share it with people who need to know how to do this. Um, if you want more videos like this, uh, subscribe. I do a lot more gaming stuff than this, but anything that's tech related, you're going to see stuff like that from me. So, um, so be sure to stick around and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.